The Congo is one of the least explored land regions on Earth. Due to civil wars, its deep forests, and the lack of industrialization in the country, much of the Congo is unknown to Western science. However, it's well known to herpetologists that a trip to the southern half of Africa can oftentimes lead to multiple new species discoveries, possibly dozens in a single trip. Given the vast amount of unexplored land in the Congo, it's not surprising that rumors and claims of mystical-like creatures living within the Congo have spread. The most famous of these claims being that of Makoli Mbembe, a reptilian or amphibious creature claimed by some natives to live within the swamps of the Congo. While there is little actual evidence of its existence outside of claims from some of the native inhabitants and a few reports dating back to the early 1920s by explorers, I personally find it to be far more believable than similarly reported creatures such as Bigfoot or the Chupacabra. Why? Well, as stated before, the Congo is home to many not yet discovered animals. This ranges from smaller herps to larger animals like the recently discovered Billy Ape a subspecies of chimpanzee that was rumored to exist for years and despite its large size has only recently been discovered by science. Any biologist knows to be skeptical of claims involving monsters lurking within forests, but at the same time the idea of a fantastical undiscovered animal living within the unexplored regions of the earth should be interesting to anyone with even a remote interest in discovery. Even if at best all we can do is make conjectures about an animal that may or may not exist, there's no harm in applying real world biology to a what if creature. So if the creature known as the Mokoli Mbembe does exist, what can we infer about its biology and phylogeny? Looking at reptiles of today, we might be able to make a guess of what Mokoli Mbembe could be like. According to native reports, the Makoli Mbembe is semi-aquatic. It's a herbivore that spends most of its time in the swamp lakes, but can walk on land as well. It's described to be large and possessing a long neck and tail. Because of this, many have likened the Makoli Mbembe to a living sauropod dinosaur, or to be more specific, what Westerners of the early 20th century thought a sauropod was like. Back when the first reports of the creature were coming out, scientists believed sauropods were creatures that lived in swamps and used their long neck like a snorkel, putting its head above the water to get air. So could the Makoli Mbembe be an undiscovered living dinosaur species? I personally find this unlikely due to a number of reasons. The main one being that it's unlikely that any sauropod population could have survived the Cretaceous mass extinction. Nearly all large-bodied animal species perished 65 million years ago due in large part to simply not being able to find enough food to survive the dark, low, vegetative years after the Earth was hit by a 5 kilometer wide meteor. Given this, it's very unlikely that the largest of the dinosaurs, the sauropods, would have survived when other smaller groups did not. If the Makola Mbembe does exist, I think it's far more likely that it's a case of homology rather than Jurassic ancestry. Given the creature's reported size, I also don't believe it could be an amphibian either, even though the creature is described to reside mainly in bodies of water. Efficient diffusion requires a high surface area to volume ratio, and as you increase in size, your volume increases more than your surface area. This is why most large prehistoric amphibians and insects live during periods of high oxygen content in the atmosphere, because it made getting oxygen easier despite their large size. Which means Makoli Mbembe would most likely be related to modern day lizards. While semi-aquatic reptiles today are rare, they do exist. The Galapagos marine iguana is the only known modern squamate reptile outside of the snakes that is known to be semi-aquatic. It too is also herbivorous, eating the algae attached to stones off the coast of the Galapagos. Given that reptiles are ectotherms and therefore cannot produce their own body heat, marine iguanas must limit their time foraging for food in the cold oceans they feed in. This however shouldn't be the case for Makoli Mbembe due to the Congo's lakes and swamps staying at a warm temperature year round, meaning the Makoli Mbembe shouldn't have to leave its waters to thermoregulate, especially once you take thermo inertia into account. Because animals that are bigger lose heat slower, big body animals often have far less trouble dealing with cold temperatures. 
A real world example of this would be the leatherback sea turtle, which can survive as far as the Arctic Circle thanks to its large size shielding it from the cold. Though the Makoli Mbembe may possibly leave the waters, however, in order to find new bodies of water to inhabit, similar to what many pond turtles do today. But if the creature does spend most of its time in bodies of water, that would explain why the creature has been so elusive. I guess the final question to try to answer would be, why the long neck? What purpose would that serve? I think the best parallel to that in a modern reptile would be the turtles. For example, it could be that the Makoli Mbembe uses its long neck to reach for plant material above the water, similar to how tortoises feed today. Another possible homology could be that of the common long neck turtle, which uses its long neck to search for prey around crevices. While natives have claimed the Makoli Mbembe is herbivorous, it might in reality feed on fish or aquatic invertebrates underwater where it wouldn't be observed doing so. Given this, it may seem foolish to put trust into native accounts, especially when it comes to an animal that contains almost no evidence of its existence to begin with. But native reports have shown themselves to be at least semi-reliable before. As shown before with the billy ape, natives reported its existence for years before it was discovered by scientists. Another example would be that of the haste eagle, a massive bird on the island of New Zealand that went extinct around 600 years ago. Despite its extinction, the native islanders known as the Mori still kept the legend of the animal alive in their myths and legends. For the Makola Mbembe, its status as a legendary creature to some of the Congo natives is both the greatest evidence of its existence, but also the creature's biggest weakness as a living animal. While natives may describe what a Makola Mbembe looks like, that doesn't necessarily mean that many of them have seen one in person. Like the haste eagle, one possibility could be that the natives are describing an animal that once existed, but no longer does. Some scientists, like Donald Pothero, suggest that what the Congo natives are actually describing are in fact rhinos or hippos. That's a very big issue, especially yeah, yeah. for those who are cultural anthropology inclined. I mean, People in that part of the world often don't make the same distinction between what's real and not real mm -hmm. that we in the Western culture do. And then their mythological beings are just as real to them as things they go and actually kill. Another, another version of it was interesting was that uh, you, you realize that you know, we have this completely distorted notion of what animals of Africa live like and where they are. And uh, several of the versions of this have descriptions that actually closely resemble a rhino. And you say, well, why would that be? Well, these people, if they're jungle dwellers, they'll never see a rhino in their lifetime. Rhinos live in savannas and in open plains, and there are no jungle dwelling rhinos in Africa. And so for them accidentally to see a rhino is just as mysterious as if they'd seen a sauropod. One explanation is that over generations, the description of these creatures changed through cultural evolution, until the real-world rhino or hippo became the Makola Mbembe of legend. Whether Makola Mbembe is a living reptile, a mythical creature, or a forgotten mammal, biologists are continuing to explore more of the world around us. Thousands of new animals are discovered each year, many of them reptiles, and many of them in the heart of Africa. If the Makola Mbembe does exist, it should only be a matter of time until it's discovered. However, some believers of the creature fear that as habitat destruction continues worldwide, including in the Congo, we may never get the chance to discover it before it goes extinct. Even if you don't believe in the Makola Mbembe, I think this is a legitimate fear to have. There are still likely millions of fantastical animals yet to be discovered by science. Habitat loss continues to be the driving force behind species extinction. Think about the untold thousands of species from insect to amphibian to reptile that must have existed but have recently gone extinct without the world knowing of its existence. Biologists today are running a race against time to try to discover what they can before it's lost forever. It would be ironic if the sauropods did survive the Cretaceous-ending meteor, only to go extinct by the hands of man.